Hi guys, my crew here. This is my video on fast clue scrolls. People were asking me how fast my clues were and I was talking about the three to four minute hards in my previous video. People just struggled to do them in this feed so I thought hey, might as well make this video and showcase how to get three to four minute hards consistently. So let's get right into it. Before we start, these three to four minute hards are with the full globe trotter set. If you don't have the full globe trotter set, it's definitely going to take you way longer than three to four minutes. Just the act of having to take stuff out of hidey holes, equip it, then do the emote and stuff adds a hell of a lot of time onto your clues, especially hard clues. You can do hards without it, but don't expect to get these speeds. You're going to need different task items. This means things like the desert amulet from the desert tasks, stuff like the RD cape from the Ardoin tasks, these things do speed it up quite nicely. You want different quest unlocks. For example, fairy rings are a huge part of it. And if you don't have them, you're losing out a lot of speed. Same with the spirit trees. Then even other quest related unlocks in teleports like the Evil Dave spell book to chip teleport tablets. Then the last thing is you're going to want as many teleports as possible. This means jewelry, tele tabs, runes, scrolls, you name it bring it and then you'll have a teleport for every single clue step. I can't stress how important it is and how quick it is using teleport items rather than going to lodestones and stuff. Either way, let's get into my setup. Moving on to my clue setup, every single item you see here is very, very important. My Slayer Helm has Slayer Rings imbued in it to teleport to different places. I can teleport to the Slayer Tower and I can teleport to the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon. That one's really good too. I have a attuned crystal teleport seed, which is decent for going to places like Laletia, especially if you don't have the quiver. Speaking about the quiver, the quiver is also very good to go around all the different places in Elven lands if you've done the task for it. The Grace of the Elves, I have tuned my max skilled garden portals to two places. One is fairy rings. It allows me to go to fairy rings without taking a portable fairy ring and having to worry about making more and more of those. It's essentially a free fairy ring teleport instead of only having 10 charges on the portable ring. So I took the ring out and I'm using the Grace of the Elves instead. It's also tuned to overgrown idols. Teleporting to the overgrown idols is good for crumb just steps and it's also good to get to a glider fast. I have the full globe trotter set. The full globe trotter set is amazing for obvious reasons. You don't have to take out of your hidey holes whenever you're doing emote clues, which is the biggest part for hards. Whenever I get an annoying wilderness clue or something, I'll re-roll it with my backpack and my chest can teleport to those really annoying places to get to every couple of clues or so. Remember to use these though, because you do get charges from just doing clues. So it's worth using your backpack and your chest here and there. Otherwise you're just essentially losing out charges and losing out time. I have a main hand drag or augmented with the mobile perk. Then I have my offhand Kopesh. The reason why I have the mobile perk is because it halves the cooldown of both Surge and Bladed Dive. This allows me to get around so much quicker. I have a Luck of the Dwarves that teleports me to things like Keldegrim and Miscellanea. Now when it comes to my inventory setup, I have this Slayer Cape because it's useful going to Taverly and it's useful going to Crumja. I have the Dungeoneering Cape going to all those different resource dungeons. Things like the Taverly Dungeon are ones that you use all the time. I have the games necklace to go to Barbarian Outpost. Traveler's necklace is very, very good to go to the Outpost. And it's decent to go to the desert as well. I have an Amulet of Glory for the Karamja and the Draenor Village ones. Sophonim Slayer Dungeon teleports for the Sophonim Pyramid one. That's very, very quick and easy to use to get there. Dig Site Pendant in order to go to the dig site for the Odd Old Man and to the exam centre to go to the students. Skills Necklace is really, really useful for going to the Fishing Guild mostly. Ring of Duelin, obviously just going to the Duel Arena and Castle Wars. We have the Six Age Circuit Ring. This is probably the item I use the least here, but it's decent in very rare circumstances. Portable Spirit Tree, obviously access to the Spirit Tree Network with one click, amazing. Draken's Medallion is here more for other types of glues. I don't think I use it for hards very often. A light source for whenever you have to go into anywhere that's dark. I have an extra meerkat scroll with meerkat pouches. The reason why I even take meerkats to hards is because it can skip the wizards. 
instead of digging with your spade, you use the fetch casket scroll. That will skip the wizard completely and that saves you what, like 5-10 seconds? That really does add up. I have my comp cape, that allows me a quick teleport to the bank if I need one. And it also acts as an Arduin cloak to teleport to Mana Farm. So that comes in handy here and there. I have the Desert Amulet, teleports me to Uza and Nada, both two places that come up quite often in Hard Clues. I have my Master Farmer's Hat. This gives me the use of my Juju Spirit teleport bags from the bank. I don't have the Witch Doctor Mask, so this is the next best thing. I just equip it, teleport to Herbal Habitat, and then put my Sayon back on. I have an Elemental Staff. Putting this on gives me every single Elemental Rune. That, combined with the Law Runes next to it, allows me to teleport anywhere on the normal spellbook. Places I typically teleport to are Arduin, Varok, and Trollheim. We have the two chip teleport tabs from Evil Dave's Big Day Outquest from the Evil Dave spellbook. These are the chipped Watchtower and the chipped Arduin. The chipped Watchtower ones take me to the Observatory, which is really, really good. And the chipped Arduin ones take me to West RD. Again, very, very good. Last but certainly not least, I have the Wicked Hood. This teleports me to any altar's location with the Wicked Hood teleports. I always keep my additional Wicked Hood teleports I get from Treasure Hunter just for Kalu Scrolls so I never ever run out. It also teleports me to the Wizard's Tower which is needed for a couple of clues too. Other items do work. This is my personal setup. Things like Passage of the Abyss, Dave's Spellbook etc are good. They save you inventory space. But personally I don't need any inventory space whenever I'm doing hard clues. The only time I'd switch up my inventory is if I'm doing elites or masters, but I mostly only do hard, so this is my inventory that's purely focusing on hard clues really. Anyway, that's it for my setup. I'm going to go and get into one hour sped up footage talking about how I actually do the clues and putting all of these items into action. So let's get into that now. This footage is going to be sped up five times the normal rate, so this hour worth of footage is now going to be 12 minutes long. That means this video is going to be quite long, but I can't exactly cut it halfway and then just skip to the end because people could say I faked the footage, stuff like that. So I wanted an accurate representation of a whole hour, no cuts, nothing like that, just going full speed into clues. The only time I ever paused the timer was when I ran out of the 10 hards that I had and I quickly popped to the GE, paused in the timer, went to the clue shop underneath and bought 10 more clues, started a timer again and started my clues again. So this is the most accurate way I could do it. One thing I will say is I do use the Alt-1 toolkit. That is what's on my screen underneath the timer. I'll leave a link to the Alt-1 toolkit in the description. This is like a screen add-on, I guess. It reads your screen and helps you along your way. So if I open up a clue, it will say, hey, look, it was this clue, go here. So this is really, really helpful for people who aren't really used to clues. It's also really, really helpful for doing sliding puzzles super quickly. It also works for the Celtic Knots and stuff in Elites. You can have it guide you through the puzzles. So you can kind of just like follow the trail it gives you and complete the puzzle that way. Again, very, very useful for people who aren't that good at puzzle clues and also just speeds it up. I can do puzzle clues in anywhere between 40 seconds to one minute. All one does it in like 20 seconds to 30 seconds. So it's faster than what I can do. So for the speed clues, I'm going to use it because it saves me time. Jagex have always said use all one at your own risk kind of thing. It's not a program that can get you banned, but they say use it at your own risk because if anything did happen, then you know, it's down to you. I've been using it for years and it's all been fine. And I know thousands and thousands of people who use it. Definitely a helpful tool, not even only for clues. It has other features that are super helpful, like the timer right above it is from Alt-1. I use it for multiple things, not just clues. Anyway, now we've got that out of the way, let's get into the actual clues, shall we? Like I said, there's like 12 minutes of footage here, and we've already skipped some of it, but I'll speak over the footage now, and just give you a little insight on things that I use, and why I go there, and things like that. As you can see right there, I used the Desert Amulet to go straight to Nada. Literally stepped like five steps and I was at the clue destination. That's why teleport items are so good. Then it was the Juju Teleport Spirit Bag, which I've now replaced with the Farmer's Hat to go to Herbal Habitat. Then I used the Meerkat Scroll to skip the wizard. Next destination was north of Ardi. So I used the Skills Necklace to go to the Fishing Guild and I could Bladed Dive right on top of the dig spot and dig there. Again, I don't dig, I use the meerkats. Next one was at the observatory, I used a chip watchtower teleport tab to go straight to the observatory. Next one was north of the bandit camp, so I used my 
Scrolls with my Globetrotter gloves and go to the bandit camp, run north, surge, bladed dive, etc. Then use a meerkat to skip. Next one was the Sophonem Pyramid. Again, the Sophonem Slayer Dungeon Teleport, run north, use your emote, kill Yuri, and then that is that point done. This last one was the Moss Golems. You had to dig by the cauldron. You can teleport with your Dungeoneering Cape to the Varric Moss Golems and you literally just run north. Again, save so much time with teleports. Next one was a fairy ring location right next to the Tower of Life. Next was the Moat Clue in Karamja. Then I got given an Entrana one which I instantly re-rolled because I can't be bothered taking everything off. I got a miscellaneous one so I could teleport there with my Luck of the Dwarves, do the puzzle and then move on to the next one. Next one was in Varrox so you can use your elemental staff and teleport to the centre of Varrox. I made a mistake, I was on Lunas so I had to run from the Lodestone which cost me a fair amount of time. But we all make mistakes I guess. But as you can see, every single clue step I get is super super quick unless I get a puzzle. But I still do the puzzles because they're worth doing and I save my rerolls for like Entrana, Wilderness, stuff like that. I do use my jacket to teleport to certain locations that are annoying to get to that don't have a teleport directly there. Things that I typically use my jacket for are the places like the one in the town above Oogalog. There's no like direct teleport there and it's kind of annoying to get. Something that's really helpful with all one though is it tells you like places you can teleport close to it and what item is needed for that. So whenever it shows you a clue and you know an amulet of glory would take you to Draenor and the clue was in Draenor, it'd have an amulet of glory there and the number for what option it is on that teleport. Same applies with things like the Slayer Cape, the Dungeoneering Cape, stuff like that and it's really really helpful to remind you what you need to teleport if you are new to doing hard clues. But you can really, really see how awesome every single teleport is and why we use so many. You want to teleport as quickly as possible to those locations because if a clue takes you 10 seconds a step, getting one of the puzzle steps that takes, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, it really doesn't slow your overall time down. Over all of this 60 minutes, I managed to get 18 hard clues done by the end. 18 hard clues in just under 60 minutes worked out to be 3 minutes and 17 seconds a clue. Like I said, I do 3 to 4 minute hard clues pretty consistently and that's on the lower end of this estimate. Some of my clue scrolls I've done before when I've been lucky and not even had many puzzles at all, I've got done faster than this. I also messed up a couple of times like I was on Lunar Spellbook, stuff like that. If I didn't make these mistakes, I would be faster still. I also messed up on a couple of the puzzles. One I even messed up so badly I had to redo, which was embarrassing, but hey, it happens. But that just goes to show that I've made a couple of human errors along the way, but still managed to get an average of 3 minutes 17 seconds a clue. Very happy with the average, and it's insane just how quickly you can do hard clues. That's why hard clues are my favourite, just because they're so quick and easy to do. Monster clues are probably my second favourite, because they're very similar to hard, so they just have higher requirements for everything. So they only take like 5 minutes per master clue, but they're just so hard to get. Elites on the other hand take me 10 to 12 minutes or so and they're very very long to do. Although the die chance on elites do make them good. For me personally though, I love, love, love farming hard clues. I know this video is a long video and there's a lot of footage here and you know, I will speed it up a little bit faster now so there won't be a full 12 minutes of just a clue footage. But I showcased some of it and even spoke over some of it. It's just so easy to teleport everywhere. If you do have a setup like mine, you will be able to get hard stun very, very fast. I feel like this is what pushes hards over the edge for GP. Just how quickly you can do them and how often they give fortunate components. Considering you can get 3-4 to four hards done in the time of an elite, it makes the short term money from hards absolutely insane. It feels like I get more fortunates from hards than elites as well. It's just that die chance from elites that makes them worth doing. Especially now with fortunates being so expensive, hards are the way to go if you're not going to just farm easies or something. Easies are faster and very good fortunate components and god pages. But I just prefer hards because they have the chance at third age items and dies alongside it being fast and very very good god pages and fortunates. I know I've rambled a hell of a lot in this video and I hope you've enjoyed me just like kind of being a talk show host at this point. 
it was a guide but then I also had to show all of the footage with no skipping so I thought I'd just talk to you guys about some different stuff while the footage was being sped up. Hopefully you did enjoy me chatting. Like I said there was people in my last video who didn't believe me or wanted to see the footage or wanted help doing it and I thought I'd make this video because it would help quite a few people and hopefully it did help you. Maybe you found a teleport item that you didn't use. Maybe you found a location easier to get to with a certain item. And the more you do, the faster you'll get because it'll become muscle memory. So you do also have to remember that I've been doing it for a very long time. Don't expect to instantly start getting three minute odds. You just need to make sure that you get used to everything. And once you're used to everything, there's no reason why you can't get three minute odds. Either way, do give the video a like if you did enjoy it and if you learned something new do let me know what you learned in the comments down below. If you did find a new item that you're going to be using or a new technique let me know because I'm always happy to help and I'm always interested on you know what you guys have learned and things. And hopefully the people who didn't believe me now do believe me. Anyway <laughs> until next time. See ya.